Hello and welcome to the Edwards Scientific Vacuum podcast. I'm David Steele, Market Sector Manager for R&D, and I've been involved in vacuum technology for about 35 years, with just over 25 years of that time at Edwards. In this podcast, we're fortunate to have with us Thomas Cohen, who is our Global Product Manager for Vacuum Instrumentation. Welcome, Thomas. Oh, thanks, Dave. Um, yeah, just to give a bit of an introduction on myself. Um, so I uh, I was originally born into uh, to Edwards into Edwards Clevedon. Um, I started as a uh, senior development engineer there, designing their uh, gas abatement systems. Before then, making the uh, the monumental leap into product management and uh, changing completely into a different division into the uh, scientific vacuum division. Very good. Uh, well, it's good to have you in the scientific team. So Thomas and I have worked together now for quite some time. So we're um, we're we're vacuum pals. So today, Thomas and I we're going to be chatting about our absolute favourite topic in the world, which is vacuum gauges or vacuum instrumentation. Um, um, today, we're going to be focusing more on these products from an Edwards perspective, so specifically talking about our own gauges uh, and focusing on our latest generations of, of active gauges. And it's probably worth at this point giving a little bit of history on uh, on Edwards and gauging. Uh, Edwards has been making vacuum gauges forever for 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 many 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 decades and we introduced what we call our active gauges back in the early 1990s i think it was either 91 or 92 and a key feature of, of what an active gauge is and what makes it different from other gauges uh, and all gauges really that were in use at the time is that all of the sophisticated signal level processing is done in the actual gauge head itself into in an electronics module attached to the gauge head itself and so they give a simple zero to ten volt dc output that represents the pressure rather than an unprocessed very uh, low voltage millivolt level uh, signal level output yeah and um really you know that that innovation allowed a controller or you know vacuum display to be designed that was in essence originally a power supply um, and a voltmeter. Um, sometimes they come with a digital display also. Um, what made this innovation so impressive uh, was that it could work with many different gauge technologies um, and, and, and predominantly this, this gave the user far more flexibility in their use rather than having to rely on gauge specific interface cards which was the norm at the time this controller allowed for the use of multiple gauges with a single device, all using standardized cables. So it gave us sort of plug and play vacuum gauging rather than specific discrete kit for every gauge head. Yeah, um, you know, each active gauge identifies itself to an active gauge controller. That's just what happens. Uh, but the controller then selects the appropriate conversion algorithm to interpret to interpretate the the gauge's output to a pressure reading and it allows easy conversion between pressure units also all right so you can change between millibar pascals hectopascals what whatever you like quite easily just by putting a little uh, algorithm into your uh, into your processing exactly and you know with the with the active gauges this is this is one of the key uh, key advantages here and the the identification of each gauge head is is a resistor, a specific discrete resistor value that identifies the gauge head, the type of the gauge head, to the whatever control you plug it into. So it makes it it really is plug and play. Exactly. Yeah. So that that has made, I think, anyway, Edwards gauges incredibly popular, and you'll see them everywhere, just about anywhere where you've got sort of laboratory, industrial, semiconductor processing, you know, vacuum gauges and vacuum pumps in use, uh, university labs, particle accelerators, you name it, you'll see them everywhere. Um, gosh, hundreds of thousands of active gauges. I, I'm not sure whether I could accurately guess of how many, but it's many hundreds of thousands of gauges yeah, there, out there, there in the field. There's a lot. Anyway, we design and build our Edwards active gauges in our product company Eastbourne, which is our main UK facility for gauges. 
Um, and in here, we would be doing our, you know, we do our assembly, we do the testing, print, uh, printed circuit boards um, are also done on us on the state of the art um, surface mount lines that we have there. Um, and it, you know, it really is quite spectacular. The the the, the things we get up to there. Um, so you know, when it comes to developing our own gauges, being able to have this capability is a huge plus for us. Mm -hmm. yeah, otherwise, you're, you're left relying on sort of outside PCB manufacturing, PCB assembly, and all of that is in house at Eastbourne, it, isn't it? Yeah, it, exactly. It you know it just gives us far more control, um, you know, over the supply, you know, over the end of life um, of certain components. We you know we also have the ability there to you know because we have our own surface mount lines to to keep up to date with the the latest uh, component sizes you know and and you know in we live in a world now where uh, you know size is obviously um very important to some of our customers as things try to go more become more compact um you know being able to you know use smaller size electronics um yeah it it makes it makes our lives um a lot easier when it comes to producing new products um, and, and and really remain competitive. Mm. And just to, to go off uh, at a tangent for a second, the, the Eastbourne factory uh, also makes most of our, I won't say all, but most of our uh, electronics components that are used inside modern smart pumps. So pu the pump controllers, interface boards, communications boards, and, and so on, our turbo controllers, all of that stuff's also made in our Eastbourne facility too. So it's really a superb resource for, for us to have. We're really lucky to have it. Yes, it really is the uh, it really is the beating heart of uh, of Edwards. It is. So back to the back to my tangent aside, back to the to the gauges themselves. Um, so the gauge heads themselves, the Edwards active gauge heads themselves are all powered from simple DC 24 volt DC uh, power supply, uh, nothing sophisticated or complicated, just a regular DC power supply. And the output is zero to 10 volts that represents what the pressure is. Um, because you don't actually need a separate controller to make any of that work, it's all built into the gauge head. You can integrate that into a piece of equipment if you want to. So if you want to do the job of interpreting the voltage output and having that read directly into your equipment, you don't need an Edwards controller at all. Now, having said that, it's way easier to just plug a gauge head into one of our TIC controllers or uh, ADC controllers uh, and have it work. Gives you a local display, gives you a hub to be able to connect lots of uh, many gauges to. Uh, but you don't need special Edwards boxes if you don't want to use them. And uh, the other thing I think that's quite smart about that is it, it keeps the gauges backwards compatible. So. If you've got an example of that is if you've got a gauge, an active gauge that you bought in you know, 1992, even though today those gauge heads uh, might be discontinued, there are replacements for them that actually have exactly the same voltage outputs and will run off the same power supply. So even though we're, you know, we're going to talk about our Pirani gauges in a minute, um, even though we're now two generations on from our initial gauges, they're completely backwards compatible with those first gauges. So we've we've tried to keep that so that you're not you know stuck out with investing in technology for instrumentation, integrating it into equipment, and then you can't use it because something's become you know discontinued from manufacturing. So last year we launched the APG two hundred series Pirani gauges. Um, which are, as Dave mentioned, our third generation of active Pirani gauges. And again, as we mentioned previously, these gauges have had the benefit of coming from our product company in Eastbourne, um, which again is our main uh, instrumentation facility. The APG 200 series replaces the legacy APG and APG 100 series gauges and we have a direct and they are direct drop in replaceable for all these legacy models. So like Dave just said, you know, if you have an APG, you should be able to buy the latest generation and it should just plug in and be able to work without any uh, without any issues there. Mm -hmm. It just recognises it as the same thing and 
away it goes. Yeah, it, exactly. Um, and that's the benefit of of having the whole uh, having the control um, that we do. Having this made in house gives us that ability to to um, keep things consistent. And by keeping it consistent, it means that when we go and do a refresh like this, um, that it has very minimal impact to our customers. Um, but you know, over time, you know, technology, uh, you know, moves on. Um, the you know we have improved electronics. Uh, the original APG series, um, you know, this was replaced by the APG 100, um, and these had a smaller footprint, and it, mainly because of the change to surface mount components um, and improved usability, including uh, you know a replaceable gauge tube. Um, so that this could be swapped out if it got contaminated or for whatever reason it would stop working. Um, and this, you know, this APG 100, it made a, you know, it was a huge leap um, in usability uh, by making the atmos atmosphere and vacuum calibration process a push button and remote capable procedure instead of just adjusting the potentiometers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes it much easier because that was, it was, I mean, not difficult, but a fiddly process. Um, you, you don't need tools. The, the push button thing means you can also do that from uh, any of the controllers too. You just send a signal to the gauge if you want to do on the fly. Calibration. Yeah, it, it, exactly, exactly. And, and, and we recognize that, you know, potentiometers, you know, in this day and age, you know, really, you know, we can do better than that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the introduction of the APG 200, well, you know, this again, this this takes things to the next level. You know, it's the latest generation. So, you know, we, we wanted to improve things even further. And, you know, we have an even more compact, high density surface mount board in this in this product, which, you know, with that, you know, brings even better performance. So the APG 200 improves things even further. This is the latest generation uh, Pirani gauge. Um, and, you know, we have this control uh, within our product company. So we've been able to make a more compact, high density surface mount board in this in this gauge. Um, and with that, of course, you know, brings a number of different performance benefits. Uh, this enables the gauge to give usable indication all the way to atmospheric pressure and improved accuracy in its normal ranges. Because mm, I think before we didn't give an accuracy specification on the Pirani gauges above, uh, you have to correct me if I forget this wrong, 100 millibar. So above 100 millibar, they were kind of indication only. That's down to the technology inside a Pirani gauge. You have to use it, slightly exactly. different uh, measurement techniques so you at higher pressures. Exactly, yeah. It's um, This is always, a, it's always an interesting point. Um, but yeah, you, you, you're exact. You're exactly right, Dave. You're exactly right. Um, so you know, again, you know, with this gauge design, um, it's also been much more. You know, we we, we thought about uh, the thermal stability and you know the, the features such as the LED light ring for indication of pressure. So you know, essentially, what this means is is when you are um, you know pumping down. You know the light will flash um, at different speeds to indicate where you are uh, in the pressure range. Um, so as you can imagine, if you, you know, at a glance, uh, you know, if you don't have a controller, you you have a rough idea, you know, where you know what's going on with the gauge. And of course, you know, if if the gauge light is red, then it indicates that there's a problem somewhere on the system. Mm -hmm. um, sort which, of a rough, rough, medium, fine sort of indication. Yeah, exactly. Ex a hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. It's just uh, it's just an indication, you know, if 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 you wanted more accurate measurement, then, of course, we 100 percent recommend a controller uh, to go with that. Um, so, again, the LED light ring um, was found to be, you know, very um, useful feature, not just for, you know, indication of the, the you know, where we are in the pressure range, but in terms of setting up the gauge, going through the different menus that the gauge has, you know, it, it there's a little push button in the top. You'd push this, uh, push this in, and it, it, with that, then the gauge cycles through different colours, and the different colours mean different things in uh, in the setup process of this gauge. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so that that sort of expands the features. You don't have to use any of those things, but if you want to, that it makes the setup much easier, doesn't it? it exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You 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 are you're certainly right there, Dave. Um, and you know, one other thing we've done is we've expanded the power supply range. Um, you know, originally this was just 10 volt DC. Um, however, we've gone all the way to 48 volt DC. Um, and we anticipate this is going to be uh, quite handy. And in, in when you consider, um, and I'm just going to say this just off the record, Dave, and we, we might be able to put this in, um, is that... Ooh, secret, the, secret knowledge, huh? The, the, the reason for that, um, 48 volt uh, power supply input is that it also allows the customer to just buy one power supply, um, mm-hmm. and and I and I say that because if they are using a turbo as well, they can they don't have to have multiple power supplies to power both things. They can just power it off of one PSU. Yeah, yeah, that's a good sort of future proofing. I, I think probably higher supply voltages for things like turbos are the way of the future you know if you double the supply voltage that you're giving to a to a device for the same power you only need half the current so wiring ends up being quite expensive it's actually quite a good solution and sort of future proofing i think exactly yeah yeah we, we, and that's one of the things that we really um you know are trying to to do here is is with every new development is is to try and future proof um where where possible um things that might change later on Mm -hmm. gives more flexibility um exactly you you mentioned that so the led light ring a question that we do get asked um from time to time is about built-in display screens you know an actual display of pressure on the gauge head itself and we have stayed away from that for for the most part with our with our edwards uh, gauges um i mean there's lots of reasons that you can think of to do it and not do it they are a bit hard to read i think anyway and you know much of the time depending on where the gauge itself actually is physically installed it, it's hard to read anyway if it's buried inside a piece of equipment or you know in a four line behind a room you know having exactly. a gauge display on it you know isn't that yeah. great um, yeah well, that's the, exactly you, you, you've hit the nail on the head there dave it, it really um you know although it is something that we see um and, and again the question comes through to me uh, you know c- you know can we have a display on this uh, you know, you, we have to think about where these gauges are actually situated, um, and and a lot of the time they are in low down positions, um, you know, away, and and again, it, it makes it quite difficult to um, sometimes actually get down there and and see what is on the screen, um, which is why you know going back to the LED light ring to give you some indication where you are in the pressure ranges or what is going on with the the gauge based on a status indicator um you know th- that's where we're trying to trying to go with this again it's not to say maybe in the future you know we will be able to offer this um but at the moment yeah we're not we're not um we're not looking at that mm-hmm. and i, I got to say i I mean, part part of this is personal preference, but I quite like to have a single sort of user interface to look at gauging. Um, so the tick controllers, for example, you can, depending on the model, you can plug in three or six uh, gauge heads into it and display them all from one point. From, from my perspective, at, at, at any rate, I think that's probably a better solution because you can see everything in one place rather than having to look around the machine um or the installation to to see everything yeah 100 percent. that's um that's exactly what we would recommend and i mean you know we've also we've also got our digital series gauges out there um and for those who who are not aware this is the n apg um or in this case the n apg 200 which again does away with the analog outputs altogether um and provides you know direct to digital rs232 or rs485 outputs um mm-hmm. and, and and these typically can be you know easily read by the pc or plc and compatible with various different softwares such as labview um and in just to mention that you know the, these drivers 
for LabVIEW are, are hosted on the National Instrument website um, and you know are available free of charge. So it's easy to make to add virtual vacuum instruments, VIs, in using LabVIEW, using that. Yeah, exactly. It's, and it's, it, you know, it's a very useful bit of software. Um, so, yeah, definitely uh, worth checking it out. And, you know, j just as we uh, just as we're recording this video, actually, um, you know, we've we've also been looking at our uh, um, our aim, our, our active um, inverted magnetron gauge and our wide range gauge. And mm -hmm. again, bringing them into the into the next generation as our AIM 200 and our wide range 200. Um, so yeah, I, and as we're just recording this video, um, which is spring, also, spring of 2023, spring of 2023, um, we have we have some more uh, good news is we are actually uh, giving the 200 series treatment to our most popular high vacuum capable gauges. And that's the the uh, active inverted inverted magnetron gauge the or aim the gauge, aim, the venerable that's, aim. That's it. The aim gauge and also um, given the uh, the 200 treatment to the wide range gauge or typically known as the WRG, which is um, a combination gauge. Uh, this is a Pirani and AIM gauge, which essentially reads from atmospheric pressure to, to high vacuum. And both these uh, new models uh, imp you know, improve on the accuracy across the range. They dramatically shrink the size of the gauge compared to the old legacy models. And Dave, you'll you'll appreciate how big those gauges are. Mm, yeah, um, I'd say, I would say that, that the new gauges are smaller than the gauge tube from the original series. Gauges. Oh, yeah, goodness me. They they have uh, I, I won't say uh, half in size because someone will probably somebody cleverer than me will probably work Do it the out. Math, so, yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's not quite a, it's not quite in half, but but it is considerably smaller. And based on uh, you know, if you know what the the a uh, the APG two hundred looks like, it, this this these 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 gauges um, are taking on that family feel. They they look very similar to that, although they're just a a little bit bigger. Um, you know. One major um, thing we've improved with these two gauges, the AIM 200 and the WRG 200, is we've dramatically been able to reduce the uh, the magnetic stray field. And you know, for those who again who who aren't in the loop with with magnetic stray field, stray field is a real pain. Um, stray field is the is the magnetic field which is emitted from the gauge. Um, so of course, you know, if you're fitting this, the, you know, these gauges into a, an environment where there are where there is potentially sensitive uh, equipment in the vicinity in, in very nearby um, it can cause it can cause some problems so again going right back to the start where we uh, where we're talking about you know being able to produce these gauges in-house in our product company in Eastbourne you know we've had full control over the development of this and full control over the development of this looks like new magnet assembly for these gauges. So we've put a lot of time into, you know, how can we make this gauge, uh, you know, more compact? How can we make it work with, uh, you know, close by to other uh, sensitive equipment? And part of that is, you know, being able to to, to redesign this magnet assembly. Um, so. This is, you know, a, a real benefit here for the for these gauges, um, and and what this does again for those who are aware, um, you know, the the aim gauge, the old aim gauge, had many different variants. Um, you know, I recently did a presentation on this, and I couldn't believe the amount of different variations that we had on this gauge. Hmm. And you think there'd just be one aim gauge, but even oh flanges my. aside, there's there's tons of them. Oh my goodness! Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, the, I had, yeah, there was more than enough. Um, so what we're, what we're doing here is, is we've been able to, to look at all these different variants and go, well, you know, this one's got an S-shaped output, this one's got a low stray field, and, um, and basically take all of these and put them into a platform product. And this is really what our, our AIM 200 and our WRG 200 actually is. It's, it is a platform product. Um, where we basically incorporate all these different variants into the AIM 200 
and the WRG 200. Mm -hmm. So t tell us a bit more about the actual gauge tube itself that's inside these gauges. So the bit that's physically connected to the uh, to the vacuum environment, the bit that does the actual pressure reading. Yeah. Um, OK, so so the so the gauge tube itself, um, again, has been improved too. Um, these are now, a, you know, a one piece glass to metal seal uh, component. Because um, mm -hmm. they so, were O-ring sealed before, right? That's yeah, exactly. You know, they they were um, an elastomer um, in the original um, old gauges. Mm -hmm. um, so, and what this does is this improves uh, the gas tightness. Outgassing allows higher temperature baking um, with the electronics removed, of course. Um, and you know, we've also changed to a one-piece disposable type gauge tube because you know this reduces the amount of components you know improves sealing and you know makes higher volume manufacturing simple um you know servicing is a single swap out just like changing a light bulb and that the uh i'm gonna hark back to the packaging the th they have the same look as the apg 200 so the sort of the small barrel um I think it's quite impressive that you can shrink you know, in the end the aim and the wide range gauges were physically quite big um <clears throat> like the same size I'm trying to think of an analogy of something is about the same size a large glass of water um about that size and it shrunk it right down um to the size of well, I've got I have a, I have an espresso cup on my desk not that much bigger than a than a little <laughs> demi tasse type cup um the you know the cases it's a metal case sanitized aluminum it's sort of edwards red very recognizable it's a family look i think it looks good um so you know if you've got installations where the gauges are visible i think it i mean it's, it might sound a bit silly that technical equipment like vacuum equipment looks nice but if it's it 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 looks nice and we've put um industrial engineering effort into making them look good um, even if they're buried inside a piece of equipment and more and more equipment that you know uses vacuum technology to enable it, things like mass spectrometers, the gauges themselves, because they're so much smaller, it's much easier to integrate you know compact uh, assemblies together that and having the low field with a with a cold cathode gauge, cold cathode gauges have to have a magnet. It's part of the enabling technology of it. It means you can squeeze everything into a smaller space without you know, needing special versions or extra shielding. I think it's uh, it's 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 a neat innovation. I I really like it. Yeah, like I said, there's 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 been a lot of a lot of thought uh, put into this, and I mean, and also, you know, for me, um, you know, when I'm when you know when I'm holding one of these gauges in my hand, you know, it does it it you know it it promotes quality you know it's it's a real nice um design you know if it, it's it it looks great when it's working um and when it is working you know it, it's it is it's doing exactly what you ask of it um and the know, same light ring right as the uh, pirani gauges have yeah exactly so you know again we're keeping that familiar look um you know which you'll see um on the apg 200 um, you know, again, with the same uh, patterns uh, when you were to set through the menu. So if you're familiar with setting up an APG 200, you will be familiar with setting up an AIM 200 or a WRG 200 as well. I like it. And uh, digital versions, the N versions too? Yeah. So, you know, again, these uh, these these gauges will be also available um, in the digital versions. Uh, and they will be known as the N AIM 200 and the NWRG 200 using the same RS-232 protocols, RS-485 protocols as the NAPG 200. And of course, as always, backwards compatible with their older versions. So, you know, with this, what that means is there's no coding required, uh, you know, no changes required there. Mm -hmm. So e even if you've got an old version in, you can replace it with one of these and you don't need to to, to, to modify anything. And compatible with LabVIEW still? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and I, I believe as we speak that, you know, the drivers are already available on the National Instrument website. Very good. It's the, 
it's a tiny little footprint. I think it's impressive. A third the size, would you say? Ooh, a Ish. third the size? I would Might say, yeah, well, I would say, I would. Less than half? Yeah, I'd say less than half. <laughs> yeah. Less than half. <laughs> it's it's considerably. Out. Exactly. It's consider it's considerably smaller. So, you know, if, if you fitted an um, you know, an AIM two hundred or a WRG two hundred, uh, sorry, if you fit an AIM or a WRG gauge, then rest assured you will have no problem fitting in one of these gauges. Yeah, plenty of spare space. And it's uh, I mentioned spring of it's mid April twenty twenty three when when Thomas and I are recording this right now. Um it'll we'll probably release this podcast in a few months. So I, I anticipate we'll be launched by then. But what 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 do you think for timing for release? Yeah, so I I I'm gonna say that you know we're gonna be ready to rock and roll by uh by early May. Um so early May, I think that's I think that's a, a, a you know good op- time and a good opportunity to start um, you know starting to sing the uh, sing the song about these gauges. Awesome, very good. Um, um, and, uh, just just for just for one other thing, um, you know, f- for anybody who who does have um, an AIM or a WRG. Um, you know, we will continue to accept orders through um, for about 12 months. Um, but then obviously, you know, bringing in a new gauge obviously means phasing out an old one. So there will be um, a strategy, a plan put in place in order to do this. Um, of course, you know, we understand that we have to give our customers notice about this. So, you know, rest assured, you know, it's not something that we're forgetting about. It's something that is on the, uh, it, you know, it's all been worked out. It's just uh, the next step is communicating that. Oh, that's good. So and anyone listening to this and getting stressed about changing to new part numbers, don't worry, we are there. It's very easy to do, first of all, and we're here to help uh, every step of the way. So particularly you know, OEMs that might be buying hundreds or thousands of these gauges a year, we're, we're here to help you uh, swap out. It'll be easy, straightforward, transparent. You'll be yeah. happy you did. Yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah, it's 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 you know th- this change um, is is not meant to upset anybody. It's meant to uh, bring things onto the next level. So um, you know if there, if you know if there are any um, concerns, you know please don't hesitate to get in touch. Mm-hmm. And I think if if you look at uh, at the the legacy aim and wide range gauges, that when those were introduced, I think. I, I, well, it was well before iPhones were in use uh, to, to to put the timing in context. So we were we were all still on. Maybe we'd gone past flip phones, but it's not that much, not that much past those. So uh, that's why they've been updated. You know, new technology improves everything. Yeah, that's that's right. You know, and again, maybe we should have mentioned this at the start, but you know, th- there's been hardly any development on these gauges um, for a number of years now. Um, so, you know, to, to make sure that we don't fall behind, um, you know, everybody else, um, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, th- there's a place for us to start updating these, um, you know, starting to kind of go through um, and, and, you know, and, and, and bring us up to date. So that's, you know, that, so this is the first step. You know, we 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 are taking our our aim and our WRG, and we are you know giving them a um, a, a good overhaul, bringing in some new features that um, you know people wish we had, um, and now we do. Um, and then uh, and then the next step is really is is you know well, how do we how do we take um, how do we take what we've got and make it even better. And, you know, th- this, you know, this leads me nicely on to, you know, again, you know, I can't say uh, I can't say too much, but, uh, you know, there are some there are some interesting things on the horizon um, with this gauge type uh, or these gauge types, the AP, uh, the AIM 200 and the WRG 200. So, you know, it's worth uh, it's worth staying tuned for that. Ah, so watch this space then, eh? Definitely, definitely All watch right. this space. Very good. Well, I see the clock is ticking on here, and I think it's about time for us to uh, to wrap today's podcast up. So I'd like to thank everybody that's uh, that's stuck with us for joining us for this issue of Edwards Laboratory Talk podcast. 
Uh, I'm David Steele. Yeah, and I'm uh, I'm Thomas Cowan. Thank you very much. Thank you.